we'll just do some short prayers uh, before the teachings. To the founder, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the one gone beyond, the four destroyer, the completely perfected, fully awakened being, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct, Sukhata, an order of the world, supreme guide of human beings to be tamed, teacher of gods and human beings. To you, the completely and fully awakened one, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the glorious conqueror, the subgear from the Shakya clan, I prostrate my offerings and go for refuge. To the founder, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the one gone beyond, the four destroyer, the completely perfected, fully awakened being, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct, Sugata, knower of the world, supreme guide of human beings to be tamed, teacher of gods and human beings, to you the completely and fully awakened one, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the glorious conqueror, the subdued from the Shakya clan, I prostrate my offerings and go for food. To the founder, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the one gone beyond, the four destroyer, the completely perfected, fully awakened being, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct, Sukhata, knower of the world, supreme guide of human beings to be tamed, teacher of gods and human beings, to you the completely and fully awakened one, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the glorious conqueror, the subdued from the Shakya clan, I prostrate my offerings and go for refuge. When all supreme amongst humans you were born on this earth, you paced out seven strides and said, I am supreme in this world. To you who wise and I prostrate, with pure bodies formed supremely pure, wisdom ocean like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, winner of the best, Lord, to you I prostrate. With the supreme science, face like spotless moon, color like gold, to you I prostrate. Thus free like you, the three worlds are not, incomparably wise one, to you I prostrate. The Savior having great compassion, the Founder having all understanding. The field of merit with qualities like a vast ocean, to you the one gone to thusness, I prostrate. Do the refuge prayers. Namo Guru Bhya, Namo Buddhaya, Namo Dharmaya, Namo Sanghaya, Namo Guru Bhya, Namo Buddhaya, Namo Dharmaya, Namo Sanghaya, Namo Guru Bhya, Namo Buddhaya. Namo Dharmaya, Namo Sanghaya. May all sentient beings have happiness and its causes. May all sentient beings be separated from suffering and its causes. May they never be separated from the happiness beyond suffering. May they abide in that equanimity beyond attraction for the near and aversion for the far. I go for refuge and climb enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Supreme Assembly. By the merits I create through listening to the Dharma, May I become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. Respectfully, I prostrate with my body, speech and mind. I present clouds of every type of offering, actual and imagined. I confess all my negative actions accumulated since beginningless time and rejoice in the virtuous actions of all ordinary and noble beings. Please, Buddha, remain as a guide and turn the wheel of Dharma till samsara ends. Through the merits created by myself and others, may the two bodhicittas ripen. And may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. This ground anointed with perfumes, strewn with flowers, adorned with Mount Meru, four continents, the sun and the moon. I imagine this as a Buddha field and offer it. May all living beings enjoy this pure land. Idam Guru Ratna Mandala Kam Niryatayami Yeah, first of all, good morning to all. <laughs> Today I see quite the new faces. So I'm also very happy to meet the seniors. We are meeting very after the quite long. I traveled quite a lot. So I just came back one or two months back. So I'm very happy to meet especially for the seniors. Usually in the monastery, 
Sinner used to stay at the front. Now in the here Bangalore centers, I sees that all the seniors are staying behind. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. So so today's my topic is the test which I have not finished last year. So I don't remember that the uh, way I left which see which paragraph. So I have no idea. So do you have an idea that we are Nine. Okay. Nine and finished. Okay, then can you see the page number? Okay, we will start from the paragraph eleven. Before all, so I will give you the small introduction of the Buddhism because I have seen the quite new faces. So generally whenever you take the Buddhism you should not take the Buddhism as the religion at all. Buddhism is not a religion at all. It is not based on any rules and regulation. It's not based on any rules and regulation. Buddhism, take it as the advice or method which teaches you how to live. Because whether we have to live, there's no question. We have to live. But there's a two way of the living. <clears throat> live happily or live unhappily. I'm quite sure that we all want to live the happily. So to live the happily, so that's the one. Buddhism, we used to teach the, some of the methods how to live happily. For this, from my own experience, I will tell you that the, my own experience, well, when I was studying the Buddhism, I have no any understanding of the value of the Buddhism. I realize it around the age of the 20 or 20, age of the 20 or 21 or 22. Now, please don't ask me the, my age, okay? I'm very old. <laughs> I hope that you won't ask me. <laughs> but some of people, they are quite sharp and they used to ask me the date of the, my birth. Did So they want to figure out the, my age <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so my point is that, so, so, age of the 20 or mid of the 20s. So I realized the value of this studying of the Buddhism. Because, very frank with you, I think it's all happiness every family. My family, in my family, when I remember, try to recollect the, my memories of the, my childhood memory, my family, they are having so much to argue, and my parents, they each of the day have to argue. Because that time I'm not understanding the why the argue all started. But generally, people all used to say that uh, they, will, they will think that there's some mistakes on my father's side, some mistakes on my mother's side. They used to have the argue all the time. I can hear that. I can hear, even my brother can hear. One day I can still very clearly, I can understand, I, I can remember that when I was age of five or six, my mother catch by my hand and my brother hand and my mother shouted at her father and he, she told that now I will leave the home. I'm going to divorce with you. I have no idea of the why it's happening. It's happened maybe all over. It's happening. Especially now that case is an increase all over in this the modern society. But I have no idea the why it is happening. After the study in the Buddha then, I realized this all comes from the, all the negative thoughts of the, my parents. Negative thoughts, anger, jealousy, ego. I know that the most of the women, they used to complain me saying that their husband is a very egoistic. Egoistic, I'm not so sure all the men are egoistic or not. But anyway, but point is that. That's why after the study in the Buddhism, I've realized that all this negative thought arises. Then later on, what happened is that in my family, I used to give the, all these messages what the Buddha have given. I taught him to the, my father how to control the ego, how to control the anger. It really went very fantastic. Now I feel that the, my family is the, one of the happiest family. But if you look at the financial status, my family's financial status is very, very weak or bad comparing to the previous financial status. It was all over, I was born in Nepal. The country is a very economically backward country. Now it's because of the civil war and so many things, issues. But I 
I feel that the happiness is the more important in the family. That's what we gain. But if you look at it from the how we gained that happiness in my family, through the Buddhism idea. That's why don't take the Buddhism as a religion at all. So I used to tell the several times when you have the understanding of Buddhism, practice the Buddhism, it does not mean that you have to become the Buddhist. You don't have to become the Buddhist. Even you don't have to become any monk or nun. But main important thing is to understand the methods, how in the Buddhism, how we teach, to generate the happiness in your life, how to live the happily. So that's why there are the many layers in the Buddhism. Then the first layer in the Buddhism, we don't touch the heaven and hell. Who cares, I think? Most of people, I don't think they care for the heaven and hell. But still, don't misunderstand. I'm not arguing the existence of the hell or the heaven. Okay, I'm not arguing at all. But the still, point is very. Point is that the now we have to first of all that the first we are the living. We have to look at this life. So we have to know the how to live, the happily. So this is the. Now the, that's why the even if you look at the Buddha's life history, you will see very clearly that the Buddha, when he was in the king's palace, he was in prince. He was when he was a prince, he was mental state is very much disturbed. You can see very clearly mental state is very much disturbed. He was very feeling very unhappy with all the surroundings, so he just left the palace, left the palace, and he just founded the Buddhism, or he found the one answer, or the one method to overcome the these of the mental disturbance. So that's why, that's why you can see that, that. That's why you can see that even if you one other thing that even if you look at the Tibetan community. In the Tibetan, our situation is a not comparing to that. It's not good at all. We lost the home. Everything we have lost it. But it does not mean that we have to feel the suffering all the time. But we can still enjoy our life. But still, we are not generating the anger towards our Chinese. But that's why it makes us more happy. It it makes us more happy. So that's why my point is that why is my point is that these souls' idea, it's house. Even if you look at this old ideas, this Buddhism idea helps. That's why I used to tell the, everyone that the, it really helps. Because I can say that the, I can give the guarantee when you practice all this, when you take the, these old methods, definitely it will help in your life. So it doesn't mean that you have to become the Buddhist. No, you don't have to become the Buddhist. You don't have, because the practicing the Buddhism is a very simple. Very simple. Don't think it is like the pack. Go. You have to go in the cave or mountain, or don't feel like that. Okay, you don't have to do that. I used to tell the, the even you will be very shocked to hear that. While I'm this time when I was in the Vietnam, I asked the youngish Vietnamese boys. I told I told them I told them the one thing that the, you know the one unique unique thing in your country. Yeah? So they have saying that no, they have no idea of that. Was once I'm the visiting the one of the ancient. University of the Vietnam. I think that was built in the thousands years back. Thousand years back, they built the one of the un ancient university in the Vietnam. So there is a one very famous Vietnamese scholar, the Chung Wang An. Chung Wang An. So in that front of the, that university, they have wrote the one letter. It said that the good scholar is the breath of the nation. Breath of the nation. So at that time, young age, in the, one of the young students of the Vietnamese, I asked them, the, do you know that, how to become the good scholar? In the modern education center, college and school, you can become very educated. You might become a very scholar. But do you know that who will make you at the good? Who will make you good? So I told them, Buddhism will make you the good. So that's why, that's the one unique you have to understand of the Buddhism. Buddhism have two purposes. One is to bring the happiness in the life and one to make the human as a good human. That's the two purposes of the Buddhism. That's the main purpose. So I used to always I used to say that this world required the good peoples. Now if you look at in this modern world, in this 21st century, the educated people's number is very much increased. Literacy rate has become very high. But still, we are having the more and more problem in this world. Why? Why you this? You can see there's so much of the human-made sufferings, the human-made problem. It's increasing. Why? Because 
they are the good people number is decreasing so in this we need the good people in this world so so buddhism have a two purpose so one is to make a good human and one to bring the happiness to in the our life so that's why now here i will now this is the general introduction of the buddhism so now there are many layers in the buddhism now don't think that the just studying the buddhism the one day you will become the happy impossible okay don't think that way okay this is not a buddhism is not magic okay <laughs> <You know? laughs> with studying and you know your practices definitely you can change i can tell it with my own experience i think seniors have heard it many years back i was also a very short tempered monk i used to get angry very easily very easily i scolded at so many students with the very small mistake i used to scold them very small with the small mistake i used to scold them even one time when i get very angry with some of the students i just bang on the switch box i just broke that switch box <laughs> still i think you can see that broken switch box in my house you can see that <laughs> many years back so now the with the practices of the buddhism now i succeeded decreasing the anger 60% now 60% i succeeded but still i have to work hard when i succeeded decrease the anger of the 100% at that state we used to call the buddhahood without but still i'm quite far i seems quite far from buddhahood but still i'm trying okay so that's the point so when i was narrating this stories to the my korean student they told me that the day want to come to the my place as the pilgrimage to see that the broken switch box <laughs> so that the, so one point is a very simple that one point is very simple whenever when i get the angry i was to become very unhappy whoever generate the anger he or she will suffer really a lot really a lot really a lot so that's why number one thing that now the one thing that i want to share with you the one of the very sad story I think you have we just means as a one or maybe two three weeks back two three weeks back maybe two three weeks back we have a one of the interfaith dialogue session in the monastery so there is a one lady from Delhi she just came to the, I don't want to mention the, her name so she just came to the in Balukope in monastery so she was narrating of the her family problems and the family troubles so she told me that the, she is her mother went through the heart surgery heart surgery surgery so at that time her father used to tell her and shout or telling that the her the when she was doing the heart surgery so father used to tell her that the now there it was being too much of the yeah that is the verb to some people they don't understand expenses too much of expenses too much of the expenses yeah that's what they said ah now i'm just asking the tibetan boys to help me to get the some of the suitable english word <laughs> so yeah so uh, her father is telling her that uh, now is uh, too much of the expenses so she was completely shocked and she was not only the shock she was very much suffer <coughs> while the her father is telling like this words so generally now what we have the thing at one point what with how this also occurs like these thoughts in this human's mind because lack of the understanding of the value of the love lack of the understanding the compassion that's why was mad with her father have not got that that idea of the compassion her father might not get the advice of the love so that's why these all the wrong ideas and a thought have arises in her father's mind so here that's why so in the so that's why here that's why now you can see that in the buddhism one thing that the, we are the promoting the message of the love and the compassion promoting the message of love and compassion but here again the i think you have heard about the love very much i think you have heard it but still you have to understand the buddhism love it's very different okay i think that now the love and compassion of mercy become the very very common word also yeah so that's why now that you have to understand the buddhism love big difference between the what you have heard the love and the buddhism love very simple way i will tell you the one thing that the buddhism love i used to tell that uh, several times that stories one cup one man gentleman came to me and he just asked me to the bless his the marriage life he's going to marry his fiance after the one week so i told him that why you are going to marry your fiance he told me that the, he will be more happy he will be more happy if he married his fiance so i told him it is 
You are very wrong. You should not think that way. You should think that the, she will be more happy if you marry her. She will be more happy if you marry her. That's a Buddhism love, okay? Uh, once he is feeling that he is just marrying her, sake of the, his own happiness, that's a, not a Buddhism love. Now, if you look, now the full Buddhism point of view, you should marry your spouse or the fiancé or whatever, sake of the her happiness, sake of the his happiness. That's the true love from Buddhism point of view. Caring for the others, genuinely caring for the others. It, sound, it seems a little bit difficult for you, but once you practice it, you will see the results. The immense of the result of that. Immense of the result. Very simple way. My life experience, I will tell you the one thing. Power of the caring for the others, power of caring. Even small incident, I will just start with the, my dog in my house. I have a one small dog. Small dog. So actually, in my house, in my house, I be, I, uh, I'm just like the heart of the, that house. But I'm carrying that dog, even that there's one small <coughs> students of the mind, they are also carrying the dog. But sometimes I used to beat the dog. When it makes some mistake, maybe being of the monastic Buddhist master, <laughs> we used to control that this in this. <laughs> so, but the point is a very simple that that dog loves small monks more than me. Even I might be the Rumbuchi, even though I might be the Buddhist master, dog does not care for that. He cares more to the small monks. Why? Because he, the small monks loves that dog more than me, cares more than me. So it shows that the, even the animal like a dog can understand the gene and love and the cure. So we are the human. Definitely, once someone cares you, someone loves you genuinely, definitely they will understand you. So this is the one of the Buddhism promoting the value of the love, value of the compassion. Once you go through the practice in compassion, once you go through the practice in the love, then you will feel the result of the practicing the compassion. Then you will feel that. One, with the small example, I will tell you the one thing. Maybe two, one or years back, when I was sleeping in my room, there is a one rat jumping up and down in the, my room. It's not letting me to sleep properly. Very much disturbance. So it's a midnight. So usually monastery, I have to start the class at the 7 a.m. morning. So I have to, if I don't get this enough sleep, I have to cover the seven or six classes. So it will be very difficult. So I could not sleep. The rat is jumping up and down. So I'm just thinking to catch the rat. I was just, I just once moment, I thought that I should hit the rat with a stick. <laughs> yeah, one moment I was just thinking, I could not sleep properly. So that's why I just called the, my students to so just look into my room. So it, is, it was a midnight. My student just came and they not, not looked up properly. And they just told me that the, everything is projected by the, your mind. <laughs> your mind is projected. There's no rat at all. Because they don't, <laughs> because they don't want to <laughs> search the rat. Because they don't want to search the rat. So they told me nothing. In the Buddhism, there is a saying of one thing. Imputation of the consciousness. So they told me, they, they used to be that word that the rat is an imputation of the your mind, your projection of the your mind. There's no rat at all. But still I insisted them and I asked them, but they done it 10 or 15 minutes, then they just left. So still I, the rat is jumping up and down, I could not sleep properly. So I was just mixed up the little bit of the anger and unhappiness, bit of, so I could not sleep properly. Just moment, I just thought the Buddhism way, I just thought it. That rat might, that rat might be the, my previous like father or mother. So you are here, be my guest, enjoy in my room. Tomorrow I will just keep you, I will catch you and I will throw you away. Today just enjoy. I just thought like that way. After thinking that way, after just one minute, I just fall asleep. In that night, I just tried, I just think to catch the rat and I just tried to hit that rat. But if I generated the anger in that whole night, I could not sleep. Guarantee that I could not sleep. Just I think the very different way. I just, I just thought that the, thought as a rat might be the, my previous life father. Usually in the Buddhism we used to say that the, all of the sentient beings are equally as the, your mother. So I just thought that way and I just said myself to the, I just uh, said to myself that a guest that's considered as that rat as the, my guest. So thinking that way it really helped very much. So otherwise I don't have any sleeping pills. So I might need to take the sleeping pills. If, 
So I don't have to take the sleeping pills at all. Because this also idea helps. Also, one very simple thing is even if you have to take the sleeping pills, there's expense. Thinking that's why there's no expense, it can save your budget also. <laughs> It is a reality, it's a true, yeah, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, now we will just look at the coming to the page 11. Page 11, so. Mm. Uh, Churato Kane, Manipal in there. Ne? Ah. To Jimriba. For Kane, begin. Ah. Ah, let's go to the Kajitian. Ah. あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、
You got my question? Whenever you generate the anger towards your enemy, that anger will hurt you more or your enemy more. Yourself more. Definitely it will anger yourself more. Now just think a very opposite way. Just try to generate the love towards your enemy. That love will help your enemy more or yourself more. Pardon? Did you get my question? So what do you think? Yourself more. Officially it will help you more, yourself more. So once you have to care yourself, you have to do this way. Once you want to hurt yourself, just generate the anger. Generate anger to everyone. <laughs> once you want to hurt yourself, then you have to generate the anger. Once you have to love yourself, when you are truly loving yourself, you have to try to love others. So that's why I think you have heard, and that's in the, in the Tibetan, there are many of the rituals. There's a one called, we call the healing rituals. We have one rituals. And that ritual, what we used to do, that before starting the, doing these old rituals, we had clearly mentioned that the, first of all, we have to generate the very strong love, strong love towards the all of the sentient beings. Then the, we can heal the others much better. But still, I'm doing the, this of the ritual healers, but my experience is a 50-50, whether it can help or it won't help, that I don't know. But generating the love, definitely it will help you, definitely. One other incident that I will share with you, that a very, very, very shocking incident, what we had to the past of the maybe three or four, months, four or five months back, just I have asked the one of the, I forgot to bring that, what we have done, the one small research, what we have done, a small research, and I asked the, my uh, uh, Taiwanese students, to do the one of the research that what we have done is that the we have just did I tell you that or not Rafael? did I tell about this research no oh, yeah so what we have done is Taiwanese students we have done the one research that uh, we have just brought the three bottle three empty bottle we just fill up these three empty bottle with a cooked rice cooked rice three bottles I have all this in the, my computer so I forget to bring it over here huh? rice so in this three bottle, what we have done is that the, we have just done the one bottle fill with the cooked rice. The all the in the, the all three bottles are the fill up with the cooked rice. So we just touch with the one bottle, which the fill up with the cooked rice. We just touch it and we just try to visualize the practices and the compassion, visualizing the practicing the compassions, and we chanted the mantra of the. Compassion Buddha, we have called Compassion Buddha Mantra, and we just touched that, that bottle. And the one bottle, we just prayed and we just chant the Compassion Buddha Mantra, but we have not touched that bottle. One bottle, we have not touched and we have not blessed at all. We just gave it without touching and without praying. We have just given the three bottles. But after the 11th day, what we see is a very amazing report. Even I, we have that all the pictures in my computer. Mm, but we got very shocked and surprised to see the result. The which uh, cooked rice we have touched and we have prayed with the Buddha's mantra. That rice has not ruined at all after the eleven days. You will see that the bottle which I have not blessed and we have not touched that rice is half leaf ruined. You can see it in all the pictures that's in my computer. If you are more interested, I can send you that picture. After the getting the permission from the my students, okay? This research is done by the, my student, okay? So you don't remember the students who came to the, uh, the fire of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, now just generally just sing, imagine. Now the, even the practicing the compassion, all this can help the cook rice. We are the human. Why cannot we? It can help the human. Isn't it? What do you think? I think you have heard about, they have done the research on the bo uh, water, doing the same method research. Have you heard that? So that shows very clearly, it shows that even this, the practicing, the compassion, so all this can be, scientifically we can prove that it can help, scientifically. So why don't we practice it? If we care ourselves truly, then why don't we practice it? If we want to hurt ourselves, then fine, we don't have to practice it, we can go our own way. So that's why, yeah, that's why now the, now the generating the compassion, it's, it's a not easy task at all, okay? Also, it is not a impossible at all. It can be. You can, you can succeed it. But there are the many steps. 
don't think that again the don't think that the buddhism is a very portable like okay mobile okay gadget like that just buying from the shop and just pressing the simple buttons and you will understand everything okay but some buddhism is not a, like a mobile gadget okay you have to study a little bit okay step by step you have to study also then once you study then you will know the more and more and more and more tactics and you all know the more and the methods okay so that's why so here this is the one the first techniques of method we are saying that to, to generate the compassion toward the all of the sentient beings number one that try to see the all of the sentient being as your father and mother okay now here now i will today i will add a little bit of the practical point practical way so we will meditate okay now to will meditate what will meditate today just imagine that just visualize that the one person who hate most you hate most okay just imagine if you don't have that time to a person maybe you can visualize the hitler or somewhere <laughs> even for my level i don't find any person whom i hate most okay maybe myself or i don't know okay anyway but whom you don't like okay just visualize that type of person okay just type of person okay then just try to seize okay now right now what we are doing is that right now we are looking might be too so <laughs> <laughs> this I just remember the one thing, one thing. Yeah, I'm sure. There's in Buddhism. There's a one practice we used to call that uh, offering the, offering the your enemy towards the Buddha. There's one practice we are saying that the, just offer that your, your enemy to the Buddha. There's one practice. So while in the public in the Vietnam, I was uh, giving the, this teaching. So later the finishing the my teaching, someone told me that the, today's the all of the women they just offered their husband to the Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah anyway <laughs> so <laughs> so anyway so so today not to offering okay just try to see the person whom you hate you most if if you don't have the that to person whom you hate you most just visualize the person who you feel very difficult to cooperate with that person okay visualize that person and do the two step okay try to think that the, he's any try to find it out his positive points number one number two try to see that person as the, your own father and mother or sister or brother okay you get it usually in this there are so many people when they works in the company they used to tell me several several times that they feel very difficult to the cooperate with other person cooperating with other person yeah i agree with them sometimes you might feel very difficult to cooperate with other person yeah it happens because it happens because you are looking from the your own perspective so it makes me difficult to cooperate with others you are not looking for the others perspective so this way in the tibetan there is a saying in that whenever you say something put yourself in the other side in Tibetan there is one proverb saying whenever you say something so if you look at the most of the spouse of the family when the husband and the wife become very close so they will not understand the mutual i mean not understand maybe they will very much become the careless to the mutual respect they will become very careless to the mutual respect they will say anything what they comes in their mouth they will not put their self in the other side it happens so my now here the now visualize the person who hate you most or visualize the person who you feel very difficult to cooperate number 1 number 2 just try to see that the positive points of that person or then just try to visualize that that person as your father mother sister brother or whatever okay clear isn't it i will just leave it the 5 minutes okay just the 5 minutes okay with carrying on the like this practice is going and going on then it will be very easy for you but so that's why then once you carry on these all practices then whenever you try to go in the try to see the any persons so there's a one saying that in the kadam i think so kadamba tradition have you heard or not that kadamba tradition you have not heard it okay then i will talk it about the later okay now you get it clear isn't it clear isn't it Okay now okay now the first number one okay now just try to visualize just try to visualize the person whom hate you most or who you feel the very difficult to cooperate number one number two what you have to do is uh, try to see that person's positive points or visualize that person as your father or mother or sister or brother okay i will leave for 3 minutes okay okay we'll start okay
Okay, we'll stop. Now, now we will go for the second paragraph. You can see that second note, the twelfth paragraph, twelfth. Avoid the places of the anger and the displeasure. Go where it is pleasant. Abandon the which, abandon the which causes the attachment and live free from the attachment. Yeah. So avoid the places of the ang anger and the displeasure. Go where it is a pleasant. Yeah. So abandon that. Abandon that which attachment, and live free from the attachment. Okay. Now here the, again you have to understand the one thing of the attachment. How to leave the free from the attachment. Now again for the beginners. Again, there is a big difference from Buddhist point of view between the attachment, love. They have a big difference. Difference. Attachment. We used to say that the, when we have the become some of the impure love, impure love, that can be considered as an attachment. Because simple way, I will tell you that with the attachment example, attachment example, I will tell you the very simple way the attachment example. Usually, I used to take the, I, uh, I don't have any specified between the tea and coffee. Sometimes I used to take the tea and sometimes I used to take the coffee. I have no any preference. Preference like that, can't like that. Yeah, I know any preference between tea and coffee. So one morning, I thought to have to drink the coffee. Coffee? So the in here, so I asked my student to buy the co uh, coffee, but he had made, he made a small mistake and he bought me the tea. Good morning, him and to, to bought me the tea. So while that morning, when I was taking the tea, I felt very bad to take that tea. Was usual, usually I can I have no any preference between tea and the coffee, but that morning it is I think that is the worst tea I have ever had. Because I have generated the strong attachment toward the coffee, so I cannot take the tea. That's what we call the attachment. So same thing that once you have a strong attachment toward the something, 
So that's why you cannot live happily without that. When you have generated the attachment, that's why that the policies, big companies are playing on that com policy. So that's what giving so much of the advertising, and they will say that if you miss something, you know, they should, it will tell you that something you are missing a very big thing in your life. Example for the Nokia or the whatever branded company product, Chevrolet car or Innova car or whatever. They will say that if you miss this car or BMW car, you are the missing some very big thing in your life. Because they are trying to generate the attachment in your mind. So once you have a strong attachment toward the Nokia mobile, I um, mean the uh, car or the whatever, once you have generated a very strong attachment toward the, that car or something, then you cannot live happily without getting that object of that attachment. In the reality, it's not like that. You can be, be become very happy without any car. I don't have any car, but I think I'm not an unhappy person at all. <laughs> so that is the that's why the company policy. So my company they used to give the advertise. So that's why from Buddhist point of view, giving the advertise, then you will generate the attachment. But attachments is that when you have a very strong desire to the something, then the attachment arises. So that's why Buddhism always used to say you should have the option in your life all the time. Once you have to think, once you have the car, fine. Once you don't have the car, also it's a fine. It's a not very necessary to have the car all the time. So that's why here, that's why here saying that we should live free from the attachment, attachment free from the attachment. So that's why now the leaving the free from the attachment. Generally, people, it's very difficult to live free from the attachment. So the first step we have to try to decrease the attachment towards the all the objects or everything to decrease the attachment. Decreasing attachment is does not mean that uh, you should decrease the love. It's not so mean that we have to generate the love, compassion, but decrease the attachment. So now there are the many ways of the decreasing the attachment. Many methods in the Buddhism are mentioned. Number one, I will show you that which thinking of the impermanence. Impermanence is a one of the way of the decreasing the ad attachment. So impermanence way of the thinking the impermanence. Very simple way. I will tell you one thing. Whenever <clears throat> very simple way. Suppose like that, whenever you have generated a very strong attachment to the, some object, like a gold watch or something, whatever you have, when you think the impermanence of the dead gold watch, negative points of the dead gold watch, then the attachment will be decreased. Many years back, when, once I was a non wedge at that time, I was a non wedge at that time, so at that time I was quite fond of, fond of the chicken. So when the SARS issues came, SARS is the bird flu issues came, so I get a very afraid of the taking the chicken. Because I see the negative points, some negative points, I just thought the negative points of the taking the chickens. So through that, then I lost, lost the attachment to the chicken. Then after the thinking the negative points of the taking the non veg then I lost the attachment towards taking the non veg foods. Then I became the vegetarian. <laughs> Because in the very difficult point is for the Tibetan community, for the Tibetan peoples to become the vegetarian is a very big issue. <laughs> because, the, because the Tibetan, I think you have heard of the background of the Tibetan family. Usually, Tibetans in the family they used to eat a lot of the non-veg. Because I think because they are from the Tibet, they are the very last the vegetables to eat. Only they can depends on the meat. <laughs> so my role model is my father. He he is vegetarian since a quite long. So that's he's my very role model. So I was so shocked and amazed how he became the veg, vegetarian. Yeah, that's yeah. So while I'm deciding to become the vegetarian, there are so many of the, my parents, so especially my parents, even the, my father, he's a vegetarian. Still, he's insisting me not to become the vegetarian. Mother, obviously, he's a non-vegetarian. So obviously, he's insisting me not to become the vegetarian. Because Tibetan community, old Tibetan people, they used to think that the vegetarians are not a healthy food at all. <laughs> Not a healthy food. <laughs> they are thinking very different way. <laughs> so that's why there is. So my point is that the, whenever we try to see the negative points of everything, then the attachment will be decrease. So whenever we start to see the negative points of the these all the object of the attachment, then we will can decrease them. Mm, then we can decrease them attachment. So that's why the point is that the, when we have a, when we have a very strong attachment then it will lead to more sufferings. Very simple like that. Yeah, go on. Subhashni, and then he drops it
Can you just use the mic? I wanted to ask you, Rinpoche, mm -hmm. you're giving examples of inanimate objects, mm -hmm. either coffee or mm -hmm. whatever. You know, what about human beings? Because they're two different categories. Okay. How would you okay, okay. apply that? So human, the same thing. Whenever you do the human bits, whenever you have a strong attachment towards someone, then it's a, you, it will leave the loss on them. But I'm not saying that you should not generate the love towards them. Once you have the strong attachment, what will become? Later on then you will become the position idea will start. Even you look at a husband and a wife or boys and girls, when you have a strong attachment towards someone, then what will you do? Then you will try to possess them. Then you will consider him or her as the your own gadget. That's the problem arises. Even if you have the family members, when you have a strong attachment, what will second thing then a possession idea will start? Then all the pros of that problem will start. Then once the strong attachment, then only you will look at your own welfare and your own happiness. Then you will forget to see that your partner's happiness, partner's welfare, because of the, your attachment. When you have a genuine love, then you will look more to the other's welfare and other's happiness. That's the what needed. Oh, sorry, sorry. That's what you needed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, have you missed the, my point? I will just start one with. So the attachment toward the humans, I will tell you, the attachment toward the humans, suppose like a husband or wife and for the girls and wife uh, or boys, once you have the attachment, then the second thing that you will start to idea, the possession idea will come, possession idea. Then all the problem will start. Because now here Buddhism, what we are saying, that it just create the gene and love. Just create a genuine love means uh, towards others, or the, your partners means just look at the, your partner's welfare happiness then the old gene in love will start then if you if you think that way in this world there will be a no more any divorce case at all i can give the guarantee but i saw the one of the lawyer divorce lawyer advertisement very strange advertisement it said that the life is short get divorced <laughs> <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> yeah so buddhism we will take the very differently practice a genuine in love never get divorced <laughs> so, so that's why now is so that's why this but the one thing is uh, you will not understand the how that the divorce will impact the, your children you will not understand that because the, my experience in the i think you are in the days of one center school in the in the our settlement in tibetan settlement the principal he asked me to give the lectures to the students i mean they're the, up till they're 12 standard students so after that then she just asked me to come to the whole principal office. Then she just summoned the eight student, worst eight student of the that student schools, worst. So she told me that I should give her the special advice for these worst eight students. They take the smokings, alcohols, everything. Even they, I think, the ten or nine standard kids. So principals are completely shocked and saying that what to do. So later on, the we principal they found out what the main reason, mental disturbance. These eight students and most of them are the divorced, parents are divorced. So they affect very much over their kids' mentality. So that's why now the from the if you look from the parents' point, they're getting the divorce might be a not big issue. But if you look from the child's idea, it it cannot so even my experience with the children who have just seen the divorce under their family, they told me that they cannot concentrate on anything. They cannot read or not. Every time they will, these old incidents comes in their mind. But why it's happening? We have to look that in the matters. Why is it happening? But if it's affecting the, the so many people's life, we have to think very be careful. Why? Because parents can add off the gene in love. They just marry because of the sake of the sudden emotion or the attachment for the sake of happiness. When the sudden emotion vanishes, then uh, they feel the marriage is just the burden. It happens all over. It's a reality. So, so my point is that so, so they feel this. So that's why the one Korean lady she told me that there's one thing happening. Strange, the Korean it's increasing. Now, parents, there there are so many of the marriages life are getting the divorce. After the after the honeymoon, they will get the divorce. Just marriage, they will go to the honeymoon. Then they will come back and they will get divorced. Because there vanishes a certain emotion, attachment, 
So they feel the marriage is just a burden. But they are not knowing the how will it affect on their children and their kids. That's a very reality. So we have to, from, if we look from the holistic point of view, so many people's mentality is hurting, the kids' mentality is hurting. So we have to think. So that's why what we are saying in Buddhism, genuine love. Things are genuine, things the welfare of the, your partners. Things are truly care for the, your partner. Then you will see the, how the happiness comes in your life. That's why I applied that method in my house. It worked fantastic. It worked very well. So that's why I'm encouraging to the others. It's working. I'm not saying that some external world force will come out that I'm not saying that. It might be very difficult to accept right now. So, okay, so yeah. So one incident I will tell you, maybe the seniors might heard that story. One incident I will tell you, the one point that in my home, I just took care of the one dog which was infected with a rabies, infested with a rabies. I just took care of the dead dog. In Tibetan tradition, we have the one called the blast pill. Blast pill. I gave the blast pill by the, that dog infected with the rabies. It didn't help. After two days or three days, the dog passed away. Touching the dog and contacting with the dog saliva. Contacting with the dog saliva. I used to go to take the vaccine. I think you have heard that, isn't it? My story. Yeah. I think seniors might have heard of Yeah. Yeah, so this time maybe... Shanti, will you tell that story? Insist of the me, okay? <laughs> I think you are the good storyteller. Okay, you can just narrate. Okay, Shanti, insist of me, you can just tell that. Even I can have the few minutes rest. <laughs> Shanti, you just carry on the story, okay? So Rinpoche looked after this dog who was uh, dying of rabies and uh, parents and brother and all told um, that uh, you may get rabies and uh, you may contact it and uh, why are you doing this so I think uh, I don't remember exactly but Rinpoche said that suppose you were in that situation would uh, would you like me to give up on you or something so anyway so uh, he uh, I think uh, that that is the story as far as I remember There was a dog that had rabies, so Rinpoche looked after it um, well, while it was sick, uh, even though he could have caught the rabies or uh, and all that it's infectious. But his parents and brother and all told him that don't, uh, uh, why are you doing this, you can get sick and all that. So he said, what if it was... Some, one of you who had uh, some terminal illness, wouldn't you want me to look after uh, you? Okay, let's enjoy the music. Okay, we will enjoy the music. <laughs> I think comparing to the your band, I think this music is a very ridiculous. <laughs> I'm telling that that this music comparing to the rough band. I think you know the rough have a band, music band. So this music is very ridiculous comparing to the rough band. Yeah. <laughs> What's it? Blue Mysteries? Isn't it your brand name? Blue Mysteries. Blue Mysterious Rock Band. Some Madun Zambala Shetan, Shetan Sadu Zambalia, and Robert de Yorwa, and Robert de Zoko to Chara Tunguzara, and Gonda Quiki and Rodua, Robert is an arm party, two years and some of the Kuchara models at Tembu Yorwa, Moro Tandu Zambalo, the Chen Vesma, Chidanti, Chuse Jorwa, Yamne Kantis in each year, Vesma, Katis in each year to Chuse Jora, never do Travachi the Nature by your Mara, that's a bit of a. Talk about it so much. Yeah, so I was just. So that's why, yeah, that's why, yeah, yes. So that's why attachment now that comes from the point of attachment. So that's why now here the now thing is that uh, now in the Buddhism, what we are looking for a very holistic point of view, holistic point of view that we are just try to create the happiness not only in the one family, but create the happiness to the whole over the world. 
for the that's the initial step we have to try to become the self happy then you can create the happiness in family then society then in the whole the country that's why even in so that's why in the nepal i used to always tell the one thing in the nepal i think you have heard there's a one communist party the maoist party they always used to say to get the revolution and they will just tell that we have to create the new nepal new nepal all the time they will say that that way now i used to tell the nepalese people that not to try to create the new nepal just we have to create the happy nepal that's the more important even you succeed to create the new nepal or not if you are not happy what use of the creating the <laughs> what use of creating the new nepal we have to create the happy nepal so that's why past the couple of the month a uh, couple of the years we are trying to do that maybe now we are quite succeeding so even uh, even the uh, in this promo promoting of the ideas but uh, some of the ex maoist guerrilla they are also joining with us so because they are fed up with the violence they are fed up the ones the understanding of the value of the love and the compassion then they will feel more happy in this line so now here so that's why now the com now the decreasing the attachment okay now the decreasing at they are the many method so i will tell you the one of the simple matters of decreasing attachment okay now the simple method is the first of all that now try to keep your mind is a blank empty empty okay empty means a mind do not think anything just give a rest to the your mind everyone is just i need a rest i need the rest but even if you give even if you get the time to the rest you won't rest you will think something else you will now you need a completely rest completely rest means a few minutes you need completely rest completely rest means even you have to give the rest for the brain or mind whatever you call it okay whose parasite logic they will say as a brain but buddhism we use the term as the mind whatever you call mind or brain let give a rest so that's why keep your minds a blank for the few minutes not to think anything okay keep your mind is a blank so if this is the method we can use whenever you generate the anger whenever you are feel the unhappy just keep your mind as a blank person whenever you someone use a harsh word towards you someone wants not to cooperate with you then you will think again and again and that incident what will happen you will feel more unhappy naturally so that's why whenever you feel the unhappy whenever you feel a little bit of the whenever you generate the anger just try to keep your mind as a blank not to think anything okay so a few minutes i will like that okay if you keep your mind as a blank too long maybe you will fall asleep <laughs> that's also good <laughs> you will have a rest <laughs> okay so a few moments okay we will have three minutes or we will just keep your mind as a blank okay so there is this meditation called in the tibetan what we call the nothingness meditation chiang me say there was nothingness meditation nothingness means in your mind we will carry the so many things so mind is a very complex complicated things so complicated things and so once you think too many once you think so too much in your mind then you will get a more pressure in the, your physical body so once you can keep the few minutes the bang and the, not to think anything it will give you the good rest okay you do that because when you try to think of nothing you are thinking of you are trying to think of nothing is there a technique yeah wonder yeah that's a one good qu uh, question that arises by the some of the scholar when you try to think the nothingness you are trying to something but here is a not we are not going to go in the going to in the philosophical issue okay because the, these all questions what you have raised is the ancient philosopher used used to raise that question because i will eat you the very simple uh, sorry i will tell you the one simple point philosopher their work is the, to play with the wood they will play with the wood all the time so a simple exa simple example i will tell you there is a when when if i ask there is a one philosopher ask the question where does the test exist whether the test exists in your mind or test exists in the tea or whether test exists in tongue you got my question where does the test exist in your mind or in the in the cup of the tea or in your test that philosopher asked so many he went to different different places and he asked the races that this question with the many different scholars and the philosophers so the, every philosopher the different idea some used to say the test exists only in your mind not in the tea and the, not in your tongue but some philosopher used to say no test should be exist in the tea not in the tongue and the mind but one philosopher said no it exists in the tongue so he didn't get the final answer at all then he went to the very far away this one very famous practitioner so he came to the that place very old master very practitioner very famous practitioner so he raised that question where does the test exist 
So flows of that, that the master in that use of the tea, you know, the, in the Tibetan tea we use to have the butter and what have, have you ever tested the Tibetan tea or not? Anyway, if you don't test it, I think it's a good maybe. <laughs> When his holiness the Lama always used to see that it's not good for the health not to drink. <laughs> because we put a lot of the salt, a lot of the butter. <laughs> anyway, so he just he just put the tea tea in the traditional cup. Traditional cup. He just put the tea tea in front of the him. After the putting the cup of the tea, then again the philosopher raised the question and the the way does the test exist? So master told him the one thing. Why do you brother of the test? Just drink it. If you can feel the test, fine. Why do you brother the way does the test exist? Same thing like that. Now when you are the thinking the nothingness, now why do you brother the what you are thinking? Just keep his mind the blank. It, it helps. Good. <laughs> so that's why when even if you are thinking the nothingness, you might be thinking the something. But why to brother with the whether you are thinking of something or not? Not thinking. Of, but just keep your other mind blank. Just keep on the nothingness, not the thing, anything. But the initial step, you might feel a little bit difficult. With the practices, then it will become more and more and more easy and easy, okay? Just keep the few minutes of the blank, the not to think, and just keep close your eyes and just, you know, blank. Okay? Just a few minutes, we will leave it, okay?